Welcome back, everybody. Today is the first Friday of Advent. So good to see you, Ken and Janelle here. We are going to continue reflecting upon In Conversation with God by Father Fernandez, sharing with you what's been going on in our hearts as we journey through Advent with you. So thanks for being here. I really love how he always draws from the daily readings. Yeah, yeah. I think that's really important. Yeah, so we're in unity with the liturgical life of the church, which is so important. And this is the value of these type of meditations. If we live with our eyes fixed on God, we need fear nothing. Faith, if it is strong, protects the whole house. It protects our whole life. With faith, we can achieve results far in excess of our own scanty powers. Literally, nothing will be impossible. Scanty powers. <laughs> I love his writings. <laughs> um, you know, there's been different times in my life where I feel like my faith has wavered in certain areas or I've just had a lack of faith. I remember when I was about 18 years old, or maybe I was in 20, it doesn't really matter. But I really struggled with the belief of the Eucharist being the real presence of Christ. And you know, all I did was I just would pray the prayer of the Roman centurion that said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And I would just say that over and over and over because I knew that it must be true because the church taught it. But I, in my heart, I had a struggle with really believing in the true presence of Christ in the Eucharist. And you know what? Ever since that time, I've never wavered in my faith. That's really interesting. I didn't know that about you. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Um, we're talking about faith today. That's the theme. And faith is such a precious gift. Mm -hmm. um, but it is it is a gift. There's nothing that we can do to manufacture this gift. Because what is faith? Well, a classic definition of faith is it's a theological virtue by which we believe in God, mm -hmm. believe in all that he has said and revealed, and, that holy, and what Holy Church pro pro proposes for our belief. So that's the classic kind of definition from the catechism of what faith is. So a theological virtue means that it doesn't originate from ourself. It is from God. It's a gift and it's a grace. And it's good to remember that because then we can rejoice in the gift that we have. Mm -hmm. And then that softens our hearts towards other people who may not be in complete union with us in faith mm -hmm. because we're talking about a gift that we've received that we don't deserve in the first place. Right. And it says that it's mm -hmm. the greatest gift. Mm -hmm. And so if we struggle, I think I like your point, ask for the gift of mm -hmm. faith. If you struggle, ask for it. Faith is the greatest treasure we have. So we must use all the means at our disposal to conserve it and increase it. Okay, we'll stop right there. So I just said that faith is a gift from God, but now Father Fernandez is saying, well, we have to increase it. Are these in contradiction to each other, these thoughts? I think, no, they, they work together because first of all, it's a gift from God, but we can dispose our hearts to this gift. And I think that's what Father Fernandez is, is talking about. So how do we do that? We ask for the gift. Mm -hmm. Then we do things like this. We learn about our faith. It nurtures us. So we, you're doing something for your for yourself and for the gift of faith right now by simply giving time to journey through Advent, putting your heart and mind on Jesus. Father Fernandez continues. It is only logical, therefore, that we should defend our faith against anything that could endanger it. Being careful about what we read, especially in these times when error is rampant, by avoiding shows that can soil the heart, by being on our guard against the temptations of the consumer society and alert to the dangers of television programs that can endanger the treasure we have received. I feel like this is so true. And because we have small children in our home, I feel like I'm a lot more aware of what they're consuming in terms of media. And really, I don't, I don't trust the people on the internet and what they're putting out there. Like, I know maybe it might be seem like it's for children, but at the same time, who's, who's judging that? Who's making that judgment call? And nobody's going to love our kids like we love them. And nobody's responsible for our kids like we are. <clears throat> and even with ourselves, sometimes we can put our faith in danger by consuming information that can put doubt into the teachings of Jesus Christ and the church. Mm -hmm. And here's an example. There, there is no secret about the state of the church. It's bad. We have unclear teachings. We have bishops in certain countries contradicting others. For example, the Ger Germany situation. We, there's constantly a new cycle of scandal happening. 
So that's there. But if we continuously put our minds upon the scandal of the church, sometimes it can damage our faith because then it can start putting doubt into the authority of the church, that she's always going to be true, that the gates of hell will not prevail. Not everyone responds differently to these kind of stories. But if you're putting your mind upon these things, reading these stories, listening to these type of podcasts that are always based upon scandal or or what's wrong, ask yourself, is it helping you or hurting you? A very simple question. Is it helping you or is it hurting you in your faith in Jesus Christ? And that was something that we had to, you know, for our own sake. Like, I remember there was a time where I had to just stop yeah. listening to certain things because it was really kind of distracting me from what God had put before me, which is my daily duties. We must take particular precautions not to give way in the content of our faith, not even in the slightest degree. For if one yields ground on any single point of Catholic doctrine, one will later have to yield in another, and again in another, and so on, until such surrenders come to be something normal and acceptable. And when one gets used to rejecting dogma bit by bit, the final result will be the repudiation of it altogether. And then we've lost our faith. I was reading about this expression, death by a thousand cuts. And you, you hadn't heard about this before. Mm. But it was an old, ancient Chinese way of executing people. It was uh, outlawed, outlawed around 1900 is what I read. But basically, they would cut a person a whole bunch of times and they would slowly die. So death by a thousand cuts. And we might not die this way, a death by a thousand cuts, but it is possible that our faith could die by a thousand lies. One lie after another lie after another lie, and soon we start consenting to these lies, and it leads us to reject just a little bit about the Catholic faith. One little rejection seems like no big deal. Oh, I don't have to go to Mass on Sunday. That can't truly be a mortal sin which leads us to the next rejection and then to the next rejection. And we've completely lost our faith. So death to faith by a thousand lies. And the lies continue to come to us through media, through podcasts, through what we read, just through putting our minds at idle. We, sometimes we have idle minds and we let them float during the day. And what are they going to float to? They typically float <coughs> towards vice, things that don't help us because we have concupiscence, concupiscence, so a tendency to sin. So if we don't take discipline over our minds, our minds float to those lies. They start nurturing those lies and they start damaging our faith. And as we believe, so we will act. It's very difficult to have a godly life and a godless mind. So take discipline over your mind, over your thought life, and place it upon godly things, things that the church has revealed to be true. Many of our friends, observing how consistent is our behavior with the faith we profess, will be moved by this calm and firm witness and will themselves come closer to our Lord. So this line just reminded me so much of my dad. <laughs> because I feel like my entire life, my dad has been so constant in his faith. And honestly, seeing my dad's consistency and his firmness of faith has brought peace to my own life because I've seen him live it out. And the, the other beautiful thing is his name's actually Constant. <laughs> <laughs> and he's totally lived out that consistent behavior. Um, so anyhow, I just wanted to share that a little bit. Beautiful. So if you're watching, thanks for your, <laughs> thanks for your example. So in closing, please, friends, uh, pray the rosary with us. We'll link at the end of this video. Comment below. We'd love to hear from you in the comments. It's a real joy. I read all the comments. Janelle this is, doesn't necessarily, but I'll read every one. I love learning from you. And uh, please share this video if you've been blessed. Maybe it'll bless other people. And we will see you on Monday. Monday.